Life for this thug is about to get batty. Here's your look at the NECA Toys Loot Crate exclusive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Scrag. After being accidentally exposed to radioactive ooze, four ordinary household pets are transformed into a band of wise-cracking, pizza-loving, villain-dicing adolescent reptiles. Meet Leonardo, the super-cool, sword-wielding leader. Raphael, the hothead hurling manholes and one-liners in rapid succession. Donatello, the brain behind the brawn. And Michelangelo, the ice cream pizza gobbling party animal. Whether it's facing fierce enemies or saving humanity from near extinction, with the guidance of their sensei, these heroes in a half-shell are always ready for straight out of the sewer action. Once again, this states that to get yourself scrag, you had to subscribe. No, no, not to this channel. Although it's always appreciated if you guys get the chance and you haven't had the chance yet to subscribe to this channel to hit that little subscribe button down below. But no, what you did have to subscribe in order to get scrag was the Loot Crate subscription box. And of course, you've already know my frustrations when it came to Loot Crate finally arriving to my doorstep, missing half the contents in box number four. At least I did get the figures I wanted to get, Donatello the Dark Turtle, which we've already had a look at here in this channel, and now Scrag, another goon that we can add along with Rocksteady and Bebop. I'm going to go ahead now and grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. Up to the very pointed Wolverine-style hair we go. Scrag stands, with the hair included, about six inches in height, or the figure's 15 centimeters tall. As I don't have a human version yet of Rocksteady and Bebop, as they were convention exclusives, would like to get my hands on that set eventually, I do have at least one person responsible for turning this guy all batty. Here's what Scrag looks like along with Shredder. Scrag is shorter than Shredder, simply just because Shredder's got himself the helmet, but he is still, though, taller than April O'Neil. We do need to get ourselves a version to April O'Neil that at least is of the same height as Scrag, and also, I think, one that's better proportions to then free a little bit of space in between April O'Neil and Scrag. Why are we making a little bit of space? We're bringing a little bit of space in there just so I can bring in version one, uh, Raphael. Uh, the reason why I did bring in this version of Raphael is because, again, Scrag would have appeared earlier in the first season of Ninja Turtles. So, of course, I did want to bring in a darker colored turtle to go along with that. Ballots, pistols, and pieces of bats all come in clue with the Loot Crate exclusive version of Scrag. So you can either have him looking like he is right now, almost looking like he's a third member of the Nasty Boys. Anybody remember the Nasty Boys, Knobs and Sags? One of their things they liked to do was the pit stop. They would take their opponent and, providing they hopefully had deodorant underneath their armpits, they would ram their faces into their armpits, the pit stop. Anyways, the figure, though, comes in clue with, as you see right now, the way he looks right now, but he also comes in clue with arms, forearms specifically, and he comes with a bat alternate head sculpt. Being that I only have versions of Rocksteady and Bebop mutated in the Rhino and the Warthog, I think I'm probably going to be leaning more to the idea of displaying this guy in his bat. Although, when eventually I do get myself the human version, I know, yeah, 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 I'm talking way too much. Let's have a look, though, in the accessory end of things. As already mentioned, the figure comes in clue with a mallet. The mallet itself is pretty limited on color, but it matches the way it would have looked in the cartoon. More the lighter coloring of the gray. You can see an outlining done where the actual handle would have been fed through the handle or the head of the mallet. This can be fit into his hand, although caution should be careful. You should be careful. Caution stating is that the, the little bit of paint actually will flake off the handle the more you actually fit this into his hand. The figure also comes in clue with a pistol. Uh, you don't tend to see too many just regular pistols with any of these turtle figures. Usually you get futuristic Dimension X laser cannons that go pew, 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 but this is actually one that would go boom, 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 boom. A little bit more realistic of a pistol. And again, this does fit into his hand. This hand here specifically actually has more of a trigger firing finger. So actually this one is the better one to holding the pistol. Fit this into his hands, just like that. And again, the figure can hold this if you want. Uh, while you are doing this, though, you might periodically pop off a form, as the other two things that do pop off to this figure to replace it out with the next things we're about to have a look at. The figure does come with, included then with back versions of his arms, which basically is like from his sleeve down. So now you get more of a fur treatment, and it gets still the little Mickey Mouse gloves. It's always find funny that he actually has Mickey Mouse gloves. Even right down the fact that there's the little whisker lines there on the top. Again, these have been painted, so you may experience a little bit of flakage as you are moving the hands around, or especially when you're putting weapons into his hands. Uh, I've already had a lot of paint actually flaking off these hands. Uh, the figure also then comes in clue with a bat head. I love the look of this bat head quite a lot. 
still, depending on what I, I know, I'm just going to start talking about the convention exclusive box set. But eventually, if I do get my hands on that, I'm probably going to have them go back to Nasty Boy's third member. Uh, but then when I have them displayed, I think for Rocksteady and Bebop for right now, I'm going to display them with the bat head. I'll swap this out in a second. Remind me, we'll come back to this. Move everything out of the way and get then a closer look here at Scrag. Scrag, I guess, would be a fittable name for a, a Nasty Boys member. Uh, he does have very much Wolverine-style hair. I don't want to say it's that far off. Well, I guess it is a little far off. This would be a very similar hairstyle I would have had in high school. More up the sides. Not so much the purple in the middle, but I had crazy hairstyles back in, well, would have been like the 90s or so. I don't know why I date myself, but yeah, it's going to be around the 90s. Uh, darker coloring is very nicely handled here. you got the dark black paint. Again, you got the brighter pink on the inside. And again, a couple of little lines added in there as well for good measure. I love the fact he does have the, the single glass, not the fact that it actually has separate lenses, but just one across. That was the sign that you were in a punk band, or usually you were just part of a goon band. Either way, you were part of a, a bunch of people that had similar feelings as you. Uh, you can see he's got earrings there on the side, very nicely sculpted face. And again, I love the idea that they've used the panel lining there where they did. Uh, you've got the eyebrows there, of course, the little sections on the side of his nose, and again, the outlining of his lip to divide the top from the bottom. It's a nice looking head sculpt, and again, when you do pop this out, you're going to be popping out not only the head, but it has to also be the neck as well, because this is all going to be one part that's going to then swap out for this piece instead. Again, we're going to go back to that in a moment. The figure does have a trench coat. It's more of a softer plastic that they would have used. For all intents and purposes, I suppose you could take the jacket off, but again, you're going to have still the sleeves remain behind from the jacket, so it's probably not a good idea, but it's a softer plastic that they would have used in this case. you got a little badge there on the side. Uh, the inside does have, again, a few little lines, panel lines added in there as well, just to give a little good idea that this guy is pulled from a cartoon, not supposed to, not so much more realistic. Uh, like in the cartoon characters, though, uh, he seems to have a slightly darker shadowing, although it's not as extreme as when we looked at, like, the Turtles, for example, and it's nowhere near extreme as when we looked at Shredder. You can only see, like, on the back side of his leg, it's only just marginally different in color. It's, a, one, it's almost like a one slight, sh slight shade, slight shade, that's a tongue twister, more of a one slight shade darker than the coloring we see here in the front. Again, a really nice looking figure. Uh, just the hardest thing for right now is just to decide how I would want to display him. For the articulation on Scrag, the head is on a ball joint, so, well... The head is on a ball joint, up and down movement, back and forth. You can rotate the head all the way around. But the head, the neck, is also on its own ball joint. So you can rotate the head all the way around by the neck as well. Shoulders do come out. There I go, popping off one of the arms. I told you how easy it would be to, be, to remove those. The arms do come out at about a 90 degree angle. Ben, you can take the arms and move them forward. You can move them back. The figure does have a double hinge on the elbow. And uh, he does also have a rotation here in the sleeve. So when you are removing the form, like I just popped this one off right here. Not really by my own choice. Uh, when you do pull this arm eventually off, you want to make sure that the sleeve stays behind as this is a separate piece. This does pretty much just come off if you're not too careful. The upper torso, if I can actually get inside the jacket, has an upper torso ball joint. The legs seem also as well to have ball joints, so you can split the legs on those as well. You can bring the legs forward, you can bring them back. Mild swivel at the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee, and then there's the articulation in the boots. Not only can you move it up and down, but you can also rock it back and forth as well. Picking up the fallen forearm, not that it really matters anyways, because I'm going to have to replace these. Let's change this guy into a bat. In order to do that, even though this one already took the time to fall off anyways, you just want to remove the hands. Just take the peg, you can see right there, and uh, you just want to remove them. Do it on both the sides. These arms actually come off a lot easier than you would want them to come off, especially when it comes to putting on then the bat arms. They never really stay properly in place. One thing I did notice, though, is when with the sleeves sliding down the forearm, there's a lot less peg to work with. So when you are putting then in the new arms for the bat, you want to just make sure the sleeve is far enough back so there's as much peg as you can possibly get. You can also bend the arm just a little bit, but you also want to make sure that you're not putting pressure against the elbow either. Uh, we're going to do that then on the other side, again, just to bring back the sleeve just a little bit. Wiggle this then onto the post. And just hope, just hope it stays there for the rest of this review. With now the arms now in place, we're going to then pop the head off. If you're having any difficult time, I probably already studied this earlier in the review, just heat this with either a hot, hot water or a hair dryer. I decided to use a hair dryer because I didn't want to use hot water in case it started to warp the collar. So we're going to go ahead then and pop the head off. I've already taken the step of actually reheating this just before this part of the review. We're going to pop off the head then for Scrag, and then we're going to replace it then with the bat head. 
The bat head is not easy to put on, I have to say. First of all, the biggest problem is the post, the ball peg post, shifts back a lot of times when you're putting pressure down onto it. The neck, also for the bat, does shimmy back a lot too. So when you're putting pressure on this, either this will buckle first or the neck will buckle as well. But then let's hope that's let's get this all the way in here. Sometimes I had it successfully in there. Other times I really had to put a little bit of extra pressure to get the bat head properly onto the ball post. And as you can probably see, you may have to do this a couple of times if the ball post, ball peg post starts to shift on you. Just recenter it and then hope that you can get the bat head completely in place. And again, you can also heat this up as well. I don't think I've got this all the way in. See how I was talking about the neck does shift back on you. You always need to then bring the neck further forward and then try your luck again. And again, if you're having any difficult time, just easily put this part of the neck. This would be a lot easier to submerge it in hot water to soften up the peg socket so it's going to fit properly then onto the post. There we go. Finally got that on there. Now, the thing about it, though, is once you pop that in place, it does look like the head is too low to the body. I think going back and looking at what only few glances we actually got a Scrag. He's sitting, I think, in like a waiting room area with all the other goons that have been turned into mutants it's strange he's never used again you would think that aside from rocksteady and bebop they would want to use these guys also as well for shredders minions anyways though the head i feel again sits too low but i mean the neck's on there it's attached properly but that's what he looks like as the bat i like again the designing of this one a lot depending on, I'm going to go back and talk about the point I already mentioned, depending on how I end up having Rocksteady and Bebop will really sincerely dictate then how I'm going to be displaying here Scrag, either as a bat or as a human. Time will certainly tell. But you can get a closer look at what this guy looks like now as a bat. Some of the characteristics, like his hair color, carry over. And for some strange reason, he's got much longer glasses. I don't know how mutating a character gets you longer glasses. The earrings are also there as well, so that's a nice little touch. But both look both good good looking head sculpts quite a lot quite quite very nice head sculpts and uh, just to put this guy back down here get him die just get this guy scrag to hopefully stand straight here let's bring in a couple of the other figures as well here's what he looks again looks like next to shredder but for the purpose of this also as well i did want to bring in bebop get bebop to stand and i did also want to bring in if you're going to bring in bebop you're also going to want to then bring in rocksteady I did also want to bring these guys in also as well to show you that while Rocksteady and Bebop's proportions give them much larger mutations, Scrag still stays pretty slim, pretty slender, pretty short. But he fits in well, I think, especially if you're one that wanted to collect the earlier, you know, again, henchmen from the earlier Turtle season. This one is really nice because, again, you can transform him and keep him either as a human or you can transform him as a bat. The only downside, unfortunately, is the only way to get Scrag like the only way to get Donatello the Dark Turtle was to subscribe to the Loot Crate. And again, if you ask anybody that had the unfortunate task of subscribing to Loot Crate, it has been a bit of a nightmare over the last little year just waiting for these boxes to arrive, hoping that the boxes are going to be fully intact and have nothing missing inside, and hope at least that the figures are included. I did miss some of the things that I did get inside the, the Loot Crate box, like the last one, the, the box number four. I was missing the license plate. I was missing the t-shirt, and I was missing the pizza monster oven mitt. At least I did get the two figures I was wanting. The whole real reason why I subscribed to Loot Crate's TMNT box in the first place. Here in Final Looks, I've actually got Bat Scrag displayed with Mallet in both his hands. Not an easy thing, I have to say, either, because unfortunately the way they've sculpted the hands here for the Bat versions of Scrag's forearms, they're actually a lot bigger of a grip than the smaller grip that would have been for the human forearms. So while you can't actually have Scrag holding the pistol and the mallet fine in human form, he has actually a harder time to hold things like the mallet and the pistol when he's transformed into a Bat. I guess the idea is not wielding weapons when he becomes a Bat, I don't know. Either way, it's a nice looking figure, though. I would have liked to have picked up two of these simply so I could actually have him displayed in two different ways. That's always the hard part when NECA releases figures with two superior head sculpts is it's hard to then decide which way you want to display the figure. I probably have already stated what now three, four times already. Eventually, if I do get my hands on that San Diego Comic-Con, I think it was a convention exclusive of Human Rocksteady, Human Bebop. I think Amanta Yoshi was also part of that set also as well. And even I think it was Baxter Stockman. Four figures, you can correct me if I'm wrong. If I do, I do eventually find that set at a good price, I think I might revert this guy back, re-mutate him. I'm going to re-mutate him back to his human version, to which then I'm going to have displayed on the shelf with human version Rocksteady, human version Bebop. For right now, at least, being I only have mutated Rhino versions and 
and Warthog versions of Rocksteady Bebop. This guy's going to stay as a bat for right now with maybe the plan to mutate him just a little bit later. Did you guys get a chance to pick up Scrag? Let me know down below in the comments section. And have you had any luck picking up the TMNT Loot Crate boxes? If you have been getting them on a regular basis, I say, I say on a regular basis. If you have been getting them at all, first of all, consider yourself lucky. But if you have been getting the boxes, let me know down below in the comments section what things you've been missing inside the boxes and what your overall experience has been with the Loot Crate TMNT boxes. Also as well, if you enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and do certainly want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.